Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Angel of Words podcast, where your stories are heard. I am your host, Angel of Words. And before we get started, don't forget to click on that notification bell on YouTube. Like, follow, comment, share these messages for us. We we really appreciate it here at the podcast. Don't forget, you can find us on Spotify. That's extra special because they got video now and all podcast platforms. Our sponsors today are OTW Threads, uh, Out of This World Threads, reminding you to be out of this world and AttitudeOn10.com, your place to start getting over your trauma and build resilience. If you want to start your own podcast, click in the description links below. We have everything you need to get started on your uh, own podcast and get your voice heard out there. And don't forget that the blog and now the exclusive merchandise. I mean, it's always been there, but hey, we're bringing it into the studio more and more. Uh, That's at A-O-W-E-N-T.com. And, uh, you know, stick with us because on deck... On the Angel of Words podcast, we have Jason Lee, a r for the Stella Connect. Jason Lee, thank you for being here on the Angel of Words podcast today. Yes, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Look, this is a very important conversation. You know, <laughs> yes. I'm interviewing a lot of artists. We, we're going to go more and more and dive more and more into that scene with live shows in studio here and doing great things. But... What's been missing and I haven't seen a lot of, right, for a long time is the A&R, is the artist developer. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of cats want to be stars, but they don't really know how hard it is yeah. to be a star and what you need in 2020 to have, you know, the, basically the, the background you need to have and the, and the foundation you need to have to build a star, to be a star. And you're doing that to help them, to help build them, to help be, make, to help build them to becoming a star. Making More you're tripping on my words and stuff. <laughs> I don't know, because my last podcast, that Spanish and English kind of tripped me up. But I'm back to English now. <laughs> now we're back to English. <laughs> we're back to English and you're developing stars was the point that I'm trying to make. Why would you want to go into this business? <laughs> um, well, I actually didn't know that I wanted to really go into the music world of things. I was playing around with different um, areas. I was focusing on like film and then helping businesses. But I've always had such a love for music and a lot of my friends are artists. So I'm constantly surrounded surrounded by so much talent. So I was just like, this kind of makes the most sense for me. And I work for NBC Studios. So I also get exposure to like the film side of things. But then I also work in the music industry. And I just fell in love so much with the music industry. Like being able to see how people have worked so hard and really put so much into their craft and how dedicated they are. It was almost like, if I can help them, why wouldn't I? Like, if this is what my actual passion is and this is what my purpose is and I have the ability to give them the tools that they're missing or maybe just that push or that motivation or that person that they need to be on their corner fighting for them, then why wouldn't I be that person for them when I know that I could be? Wow, NBC Studios. (laughs) Yes. God knows I love 30 Rock. I love The Office. I'm all about NBC. So you're in there with all that mega talent. Yeah, I'm on on set of a show. Yeah, they're filming a new show called The Missing. Are you um, allowed to talk about that? I yeah, don't want to get you in trouble. I can. Right. I just can't. <laughs> yeah, I can say the yeah, name of the uh, show. I can't okay. um, say too much about who the actors on the show are okay, at the cool. moment or like any other personal information about their filming stuff. But the show is called The Missing. It should be airing soon. I mean, we're still filming, so. You said that the name of the show was The Missing? The Missing, yeah. All oh, right, and NBC on, on the way. Is it going to be on Peacock or NBC itself? I personally don't know. Okay. All right, no, because <laughs> yeah, I, I, sub- I subscribe to Peacock, so. Happens. Hopefully, I mean, yeah. I know it's going to be, it's like a mystery crime show. That's that's about it. That's All as right. much as I can say about. All right, the cool. Story no, line. no, no, no. But that's great. Thank you. That's more than enough information yeah. that we need. Thank. You. We just broke it here. You know, new show <laughs> on NBC, man. Keep a lookout for it. All right. So you're surrounded with talent, which is basically essentially what drove you. You know into this field, into mm-hmm. this realm. Now, I want to talk about the Stella Connect yes. and why you decided to begin that, which is your own business venture, yes. correct? Yeah. So the Stella Connect is my company that I started in January 
um, of this year. And then I kind of launched it in like February-ish. But January was when I had like first posted my first Instagram post. And then like I had just started making connections. February was where it like really broke off. But essentially it's an entertainment company. It's a full service entertainment company. And we offer everything from artist development, productions and events. And those are kind of the three main focuses. And the way I've been going about it is just really connecting and working with other brands and companies that do similar things or maybe have um, reaches that I won't have. And then we can connect and work together to really like create this community. But initially it started as a promotional Instagram. Yeah, it was just going to be like I was trying to create like a magazine type of thing. I was going to write articles and just shout out different artists and different businesses. And I was going in too many directions. I didn't know where to like narrow it down until I really got into the music industry. And I met um, Ayers Harris, who's one of my business partners. So him and I do work together. He has his own company, Airs Entertainment, that I work for. Um, and within that, like, we just kind of became business partners and both our companies worked together and we kind of just, he'll send artists that need services and I'll send artists that need some of the stuff that he offers. So it works out pretty well. That's fantastic, you yeah. know, because I feel like, like I mentioned before in the beginning of the show, I feel like it's something very important. Mm -hmm. And real quick, everyone, anyone that still stuck around, because I wasn't going to give it to you in the beginning. The first person that tags me and Stella, Stella, mm -hmm. what's your Instagram handle? The, the, the Stella Connect Instagram handle. Is that the best one to use for yes. you for this little promotion we're doing? It's at the underscore Stella Connect. Very at, simple. At underscore. No, at the. At the. Underscore. underscore Stella, Stella Connect. Connect. Yes. Tag her. Right. Tag me. That you that you are subscribed on YouTube. We will get the I will get the definitely get the notification through my through my Gmail account. So once I see that you you've you've uh, subscribed and you've tagged me and Stella, the first person to do so will get one of these awesome coffee mugs yeah. that we just got in. So uh, uh, stay tuned and uh, you know make it happen, man. Get your free cup, man, and we'll send it to your address wherever you want it uh, to be sent to. Now, Stella, let's get down to business. I want to talk yes. about your business because this is very important <laughs> to me, and we're gonna break it down. We're yes. going to start with the artist development and what does that mean to you? Yeah. So artist development, kind of how you said earlier, like building stars, there's a lot of aspects to artists when they're working on projects and dropping songs. Like it's not just about music as much as like people want to believe like, OK, well, I'm very talented. I, I have a song. It's fire. I put it out there and now they think they're going to become a superstar. And that's just not how the industry works. There's a lot of different things that goes into it. You need media training. You need things that are going to make you stand out. You need to have EPKs. You need to have someone who's kind of teaching you the ropes and helping you with your song rollout, your distribution, your playlist placements. And something that I noticed that artists were struggling with was so many of them didn't have the time or the knowledge to put into the business aspect of it. It's a lot of like they, they're focusing so much on the music, which is great because that's where the focus should be, that they're not interested in the business part. And that's where they fumble. So with artist development, I wanted all my services are really tailored around different things that I noticed while working with artists that they needed and that they were lacking and stuff that they I saw people charging insane amounts for the services that they're offering. And it was stopping a lot of artists who I felt were very talented from progressing because it became all about money. And they couldn't even direct a lot of their money towards studio time because now they're trying to focus on marketing, which is important, but it, it gets hard. I mean, the truth is like everyone's struggling and people don't always have the funds that they need to get to where they need to get to. So artist development is just everything that's embodied within you becoming a well-rounded artist. So you feel like the marketing aspect is really was taken away from the money for the studio time for a lot of these artists, yeah. which they need to be in the studio because you need to be consistent with your music. Yes. You got to <laughs> drop a song. Like, well, yeah, go ahead. Continue. Yeah. No, I was just going to yeah. say um, yeah. studio. If you don't have the money to be in the studio, then you shouldn't be investing your money in anything else. You know what I mean? Like if you're an artist and you can't afford a three hour session, then there's no reason you should be out trying to party. Or out at a, trying to pay $120 to perform at a venue. You know, like I think a lot of people target their attention to the wrong stuff because it's like you need to start with your craft. You know, invest your money in the song rollout. Invest your money in the services in making sure you have an EPK. Like I've met some artists who are more inclined to pay 
money to perform at a venue because they think it's going to be great. But then their song isn't like fully mixed and mastered. And it's just like, all right, well, now you just fumbled your chance because or maybe their song is fire and they perform and they meet someone and the person works for a label. Any label is going to ask you for an EPK off front. Now they don't have an EPK and they don't have the money to pay for an EPK. So now you're kind of stuck. But if you were focusing on like, okay, I have my studio time. My song is good. I have all my stuff put together. I have everything that I need. I'm marketing, making merch, investing in all that stuff. Then when you get in front of the right people, you're already packaged. You're already well put together. You can sell yourself a lot better. So I think artists need to focus on where they're directing their funds and where they're directing their energy and their time. And that's what you do. Now, you know what? Don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> uh, there's something you said that I do not want you to sugarcoat. If if I'm a person in a position of power for artists, you know what I'm saying? Where mm-hmm. I can put you on and you come on stage without a mis- mix or mastered song. I'm it's not even embarrassing. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's horrible. real talk. I mean, they're going to look past you. I've been yeah. in, I've been in the industry. I've worked for record labels before in the past. I've worked for magazines that, you know, that write about these things. Yeah, and they're they, so blunt. They're, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're going to shut you down. You're not going to get people yeah. like me that are nice about it. 100 <laughs> percent. And I've had people send me songs like just to play at events and the songs. I mean, maybe it was mixed and mastered for them, but like they're. Like when you listen to music, you can tell the difference between the different quality. You can kind of, after spending so much time in the studio, you can hear how the engineer kind of put it together, what they were doing. Like you can break down the song a lot more when you spend a lot more time with artists and you see that process. And you can tell that there are certain songs that have potential, but like maybe had they stayed in the studio a little longer, maybe had they had a different engineer or maybe had, you know, like there's so many different factors that go into it. So it's really a matter of like, you should be on top of your craft more than you are on top of your, like, clout. And I think that's a big thing that I've noticed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, because this is serious talk. Yeah, like, it is. Because you know, yeah. we're going this, we're, we're going this route, and I'm, I, I want to bring artists here. And thankfully, I haven't had any. You know, uh, I mean, I, I've only had one here, and I haven't had any crazy situations yet. But you know, me, for example, like I'm looking for these things as well. Like mm-hmm. I'm not just gonna bring up anybody up in the studio to come perform live. And here. most, most yeah. um, podcasts and med- media in general, they're yeah. always looking. And I have had some artists who've gotten upset that like. Maybe they weren't booked for a a show or something or they were turned down. But like even when I look at artists who message me or try to work with me, like I look at everything. I'm looking at your followers. I'm looking at your engagement. I'm looking at your photos, the quality of your photos, like the, the quality of your music, your content. How much music do you have out? Like I've had artists hit me up for services, but then they have no songs. And I'm like... I have nothing to work with. Like, you, need a little <laughs> yeah, facts, bit. you know, yeah. like it's great that you want to yeah. be an artist, but like you have to become an artist first before we can really like start moving you forward. So it, it, there's so much that goes into developing an artist and they're all at different levels. And uh, w- w- when you find artists that, you know, would do, uh, have you ever made someone like perform for you in front of you and like forget lyrics or something like that or that nature? You know what I mean? Because a, a lot of this stuff, you know, like if you want to be an artist, you got, you know, you got to mm-hmm. be on top of everything with your own stuff. Like you got to know your own stuff. Yeah. right? You would imagine. Um, I personally haven't. Okay. I feel like I should now that you brought it up. I never thought of that. Um, But I personally haven't done that. Usually, so I work with all artists at any level that you're at because I have services that are tailored for everyone. Okay, so you do you would do a po- uh, poetry yeah. person or you yeah. know? Yeah, any- I also okay. work with businesses and stuff like that. Like the Seller Connect is supposed to be a community. It's a connect. So some I have a friend right now who he is a boxer and he works with me. I give him consultations. Um, I also send him professional photographers. So I'm essentially like the goal with Seller Connect is that while we're focusing on artist development, production, and events, that it's still a community. It's still plugging everyone in. If you need someone for a specific lane or for a specific project or for something, I'm supposed to be the person who has all those people, this huge database. If you need a photographer, videographer, makeup artist, dancers, that you come to Stellar Connect and you'll find all of that there. And we'll just plug you in in the right place. So that's really essentially the goal with Stellar Connect. The focus is just more on the entertainment industry than like the business side. But I do work with businesses and I do work with other people outside of entertainment. It's just essentially it all connects. Yeah. Stellar Connect. Yeah, yeah I mean, everything it, connects, <laughs> but your focus is working with the individual artists, yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. If you will. And I don't. Um, so I don't manage artists. I have three artists that I manage. Shorty Reasley, Mark and Evie. 
Those are my three artists that I work with. Um, I also manage Ayers Harris, but he's also in the same industry as like he's a manager as well. So like I feel like it's more of like a friendship management thing at the moment because we do the same thing. So like he really guides me on a lot of stuff and then I guide him. But I don't take on artists to manage. To manage you full time, I have to like that that has to be a long term relationship that forms. I need to see your like how you are. Like I know Mark, when I started managing him, he had originally asked me and I said no because I like didn't have the time to commit to him. And I would never take on an artist if I can't commit that time that they need to grow. Um, but he was so consistent in terms of supporting my business and supporting um, everything I was doing, the artists I was working with. I also watched him grow in his craft from when he had asked me to be a manager to when I started managing, I saw his dedication. He was traveling from Philly to my events in New York City. You know, that's a huge dedication to do almost every other weekend to drive down for an interview, for an event and for stuff. And he was, I, I noticed how dedicated he was. And then I reached out to him and I was like, if you're still looking for a manager, I think like now I've settled my, the things I was working on. I have more time and I, I can commit to being your manager. And that's kind of how we started. Signs of dedication. What are they? Um, Artists need to know because you need to be yes, dedicated to your craft. 100%. Please, hit them. <laughs> Consistency hit in your music, on your Instagram posts, um, professionalism at all times. Um, making sure that you are. And what do you mean by that? Professionalism, um, just how you carry yourself, how you speak to people. I've been addressed in some crazy ways. I've actually blocked some people on Instagram from how I've been addressed. I've had people create other accounts and then message me, cursing me out, yelling at me and stuff because I just will not tolerate unprofessionalism, especially being a woman in the industry. Like there's no way that I'm going to allow a man to address me in a vulgar or inappropriate way and then assume that we can do business together. You know, like, so that's a big thing for, for me specifically as someone in the industry. I'm very cautious on how you carry yourself, how you present yourself. Um, you know, like, actually being focused on the music aspect. I think some artists, I've had them, like, want to meet for business, like, meetings. I do typically meet with artists for free if, like, I see, like, if I've seen them a few times at events and I see value in meeting with them. But typically I would charge for a consultation. But I've had some people message me, like, oh, like, I want to take you out for drinks and then maybe we can talk a little bit of business. Almost like if, like, you know, like, I need them. And, like, just the way I get approached sometimes, like, yo, bro, or, like, yo, what's up? Like, or, like, if I don't respond... With, tell them, tell Like, em. if I don't respond tell within em. an hour, it'll be like, all right, never mind. I guess you don't want to do business. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm working. Like, I, I'm not on my phone 24-7, you know? Like, you have to say hello. You need to introduce yourself. Like, sometimes people hit me up and they're like, let's work. And I'm like, I don't even know what you do. What do you mean, let's work? You, that can mean 20 different things, you know? So it's really important that it's kind of like, hi, introduce yourself. Say your name. Say what you do. Say you're an artist. Say what you're looking for specifically because it's, I do 101 things. So if you message me and you're just like, I want to work, it's like, okay, well, how do you want to work? What do you do? What do you have to offer? What is your budget? Like, do an actual introduction. I know sometimes for people it might feel a little like corny or like weird or out of place, but it's like if you're trying to separate yourself from other artists, like you need to do what's going to separate yourself from other artists. And that's have that professionalism. When you walk into a room, like if you're an artist, you should make a present. Like your presence should be known. And that's what I look for in artists. When I look at artists, the artists that I work with, like heads turn when they walk in the room. You know, like there's that presence that it's like you don't even need to know who they are, what they do. You feel their energy in the room and it's a positive energy they're mm -hmm. doing. Like that's one of the biggest signs for me on who's going to, you know, really take off and who's not. And, and you don't have to be an extrovert to have that presence. You know, you can be someone that's very quiet and to yourself, but still make a presence known, you know, be more, pay attention to your style, pay attention to how you look. Pay attention to, you know, you don't have to be dripped in designer. You don't have to be dripped in a thousands of dollars jewelry, but make your look your own. Really, like, embody your character and who you are and stuff. Like, those are all factors that are so important when looking at an artist. I have these conversations all the time. Yeah. Right? I have these Same. conversations all the time. I've been having them for a long time, for a long time. You know what I mean? I talk to my co-producer about that all the time. You know, you'll go to you'll go to a showcase and everybody looks like a clone. It's yeah, like, no, I don't look, want that. Yeah. 
And I love seeing artists like really embodying their, their, um, I don't want to say character because I know that it's who they are, but Mm -hmm. it's like embodying their artistry. You know, you can tell who certain artists is. You can kind of tell what their sound is going to be like when you see their look. I was at an open house for a studio yesterday and there was this group of guys, like a, a, a band, I guess. They weren't really like a band. They were just like a singing group. Um, and they came in and they, you could tell, like they had the earring, the, the all like sparkly tops like it was just a cool punk rock metal vibe going for them but it worked like you could tell it was their look and that's another big important thing is be authentic to who you are because people can tell when you're uncomfortable people can tell when it's not really you and you actually are stepping into a fake character and that's what will set people apart because I've seen artists really trying to look like an artist and you're just like all right bad bunny look alike take a seat you know (laughs) <laughs> and then you see artists and you're just like, whoa, like, I love your top. I love your things. Or their their chains aren't basic anymore. It's not just their name. Their chains are like, I know my artist, his symbol is like the rocket mm-hmm. emoji. Nice. So he has a chain that's the rocket. And that's like his brand. So it's like he wasn't just getting it to show off and to just have a chain. It's like he's branding. He's He's creating... He's reminding you who he is. He's reminding you that when you see the rocket you're going to always think of him. So it's like that association with his branding and his target uh, marketing is like, it works. So like you can you can tell when someone really puts effort into their look and into their sound. I love that we're having this conversation. Yes. Gotta be honest, <laughs> something I think about all the time, I only talked to one other person about it, which is co-producer Star Trek. We talk about this all the time because, you know, um, we... we 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 take everything we do seriously. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And we always have. We've always been that way. And, you know, there is a lot of ups and downs and trials and tribulations where you, when you're coming up in the game and you can't quit and things of that nature. But there are also all these little idiosyncrasies, these little nuances that you're discussing now that I'm glad you are because essentially what I want to do is help those artists out yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here to help you. I'm out here to give you media training. You're coming here. You're having a live interview. This is media training. Yeah, it definitely is. You know what I'm saying? So Exactly. I'm trying to help you. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what it's going to get worse. You know what I mean? It's going to get crazy for some people. Yeah. Even for me, like, it's so weird to me because I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. Um, I am trying to get more in front of the camera. I have a few shows coming out where I'm going to be hosting. I also like I'm getting into acting. So I'm modeling too and, and doing like guest appearances um, for some of the music videos I'm directing and stuff. So like it's cool because I'm, I'm starting to get into a different lane that isn't me being an artist. But it's also like it, it applies to everybody. You know, like I remember when I first started, I had no money, like no money. Like I, I don't even know how I made it to some of the events. But I remember saying like I need to be in these events. I need to be in front of these people. So I just offered like my services for free. I was like, I'll help at the door if I can get in for free. And I would go and help at the door and I didn't have to pay to get into the events that I couldn't afford to get into. Same with like outfits. Like it took me a minute to settle. Now I'm I'm in a better place. But like when I was just getting started, I remember sitting there thinking like people are walking around with chains that cost more than I have in my bank account right now. And I remember speaking with other artists and I was like, oh, like they're struggling too. They just look like they're not. And that's kind of where I started picking up on like, how would I move? And like, you know, what was going to be worth investing? And sometimes it is going on a crazy shopping trip and and getting all the things that you need to get to. Because like, if you're going to commit to this lifestyle and this industry, you need to have all the factors involved. You need to make it work from all levels and all angles. And you just got to do what you have to do to like get to where you have to get to. Love it. Love it. All right, guys. I, I <laughs> hope you got, hope you took notes. Pay attention. You're dropping Pay jewels attention. here on the Angel of Words podcast. You know how we do. Uh, don't act brand new. This lady knows what she's <laughs> talking about. We're going to move on to the next thing, which is event booking. Yeah. You offer event booking services, right? So... Uh, how do you go about that? You know what I mean? Like that's a, you know, that gives me nervous. You know, you were telling me a story before we got on the air. Yeah. How sometimes, you know, there's no mics, the mics ain't working, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The speakers are trash. Like you, but you book events, you know, like uh what kind of spaces do you like to usually look for? And uh what kind of artists do you like to usually bring? 
So I do a couple of things. I do want to shout out Afroductions. Um, Afroductions. Yes, Afroductions. They're a co- event curating company ran by one of my close friends, Aphrodite. She's also an artist. And I partner with them and Airs Entertainment in hosting events. So we typically, as a team, will kind of create the different events based on what we're seeing is happening in the industry and also with the different artists that we work with. So like a lot of we have main events like Photo Ganza and Bring the Energy. Those are two um, reoccurring events that happen either every month or every other month. And those are tailored to underground artists and helping them really gain that exposure. So that's kind of where we get into in terms of curating events. We do plan out different events. We just did an open um, mic um, not too long ago. So we do that. And then in terms of booking for those specific events, any artists that are under us. So like I have artists that are under me. Um, Ayers has artists that are under him. And Aphrodite works with some artists very hands on. So we do kind of as a part of working with our company, they get first dibs on all the events that we have. So they'll be the first ones made aware. We'll see if they can, we can get them on for the event. They'll be kind of the openers, the main headliners. Then we have connections to some higher, to artists that are at different levels and we'll reach out to them and we'll book them. And then we kind of leave it open. Our connect and reach is so big that typically artists signing up is never a problem. Mm. I think, um, Photo Ganzo, we had almost like 70 signups or 80 signups for artists that wanted to perform. Mm, um, wow. And of course, like you can't have an event with 70 artists. Like nah. it's a little crazy to nah, do. Man. Yeah. <laughs> They're saying, what's that? What's that? The, the A Street Festival in Austin? What's that? The, 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 the festival they do out there? They have like a whole week of artists. Yeah. Right? It's insane. It's like do, trying to fit in like a three day rolling loud into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's yeah, no, it's not. That's not happening. Um, so that's typically how we would go about booking for our events. We typically have artists that we have in mind already based off of the artists we work with and then artists that we have a connection with. Um, And then we open it up so that we can get some new artists. Um, But what I do for all artists is when they message me and say that they're looking for event booking, I kind of ask around what their budget is for event bookings. And then I'll... I have connections to a lot of different venues and companies and people who are always throwing events. So whenever I see an event that's going to be tailored to an artist that I know has already reached out to me, I would set that up. And I have certain deals with like, I know with V. Henny, I've worked with her as an event booker. And like she has her own system on how to go about booking artists and other people have their own systems too. So it's really just a matter of like, I have that list of artists that want um, events. I know the type of events that they'll do good in. Whenever I see that it'll be a good opportunity, I kind of just plug them in and go about the system of how the event booking is going. So that's really how I do it. And then I have like a, an email subscription thing that I'll add everyone to and kind of blast it out when it's our events. What apps are you using to keep yourself in line? Because I'm sure there's, that's a lot going on, <laughs> yeah. man. Come on. Um, I'm kind of basic, but I love Google Drive. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. Google Drive is official. It, what it I saves use. me. I color coordinate all my folders. Yeah. Um, I share it with everyone who I work with. Um, and then, like, I have my Excel sheets and I break mm-hmm. that all down. And at work, it's pretty cool because, like, my job, I work on my laptop sometimes. So I'm able to kind of, like, bounce around. And, like, when I'm on my break, I can sit and kind of, like, go through my emails, go through my spreadsheets, make sure everything's good. And then take a break from that and go back to work. And then when I get home or I'm in the studio, like, I can sit and break it down. I'm the person in the studio that's always on their laptop. I've had artists come in and they're like, I would be bored if I wasn't like singing the whole time. And I was like, I would go crazy if I was singing the whole time. Yeah, like, exactly. you know, like yeah, this is what fast. works for yeah. me. So like, it's cool. Cause like, I'm, my mind goes at like a hundred miles an hour. So like it works. It has to. <laughs> yeah. It has to. I have like a thousand yeah, times. It's yeah. the only way it's going to work for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're Literally. built for this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, let's. we're going to move on to music exposure. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So we do a few different things with music exposure. So I do promote on my platforms. I do promote on the Airs ENT platforms. Aphrodite promotes on her platforms. So we kind of plug in any of their stuff that needs promotion and then any artists that work with me that need promotion. We kind of have like a community of support that's growing. And we even have some artists that also connect and and support other artists as well, which is the goal is that every artist is supporting all the other artists. Um, We have campaigns, Spotify campaigns, um, playlist placements, making sure that you're getting any media training that you need or just exposure to different media outlets. There are, um, I have like a list of podcasts, um, 
platforms, articles, people who write articles. There's just like a variety of platforms that I have like a whole spreadsheet of. And then based on the artist's budget and based on their style, their genre, their like fan base, then I'll kind of plug them into what would be the right fit for them to expose their music. How long did it take you to, to build this database? Um, I started in January. <laughs> oh, wow. So, but you've been on it, apparently. Yeah. You've been, I mean, you're, like you said, you're there <laughs> 24-7, 365 right now. Yeah. So, all right, cool, cool. But you do have a place that you're Just all right. Just a couple of months, I yeah. do, you know, punk rock, for example. I bet this is what I got for you. This yeah. is what I think will best suit you. This is what the budget's going to be that you're going to need for you to get involved in these uh, situations. And, you know, this is what my cut's going to be for helping you. Boom. Yeah. And, like, sometimes, um, so depending on the... So I don't really do cuts all the time. Okay. I do a uh, general price. Copy. So like I like working with the artists and their budget. I have had one artist who told me he was like, you're hurting artists by utilizing their own budget. You should just have a set price and leave it there. Um, and I personally just didn't agree with that because I everyone's at different levels and everyone is at like life happens. Like one day it's you might have a fluid situation. Yeah. You know? Like one day you might have the money and one day you might not. Yeah. And one day you might have no money and then release the song and blow up. You know, like you just don't know where an artist is going to go. You don't know. You know, maybe it's someone who has the money, but then something happens to them and, and they just they're in a rush to do something. But can't, you know, like there's just so many factors. There's a lot of dynamics. So I'm very big on working with artists' budgets because there are platforms that, um, you know, they're lower priced. They're more accommodable for people. So I typically would just like have a set price for specific platforms and then work with the platforms in terms of getting a percentage through the platform. And through the um, company themselves instead of through the artist. The artist just gets a general price um, that they'll work with. And then when it's something a little bit more complicated, then we'll get into more with the percentages and making sure that there's a contract and stuff like that. But for the most part, I usually like to just give artists a set price and let them work off of that. Because sometimes when you break down percentages for artists, it, it gets too confusing. Like they just yeah. don't understand <laughs> the system. They don't understand how it works. They don't half the time they don't even care. I mean, they should. Yeah, they should. But I've also learned some artists, when it comes to the business side, they're just very big to like, here, I'll, I'll just pay. Just get it done. Here, I'll just pay. You know, they're not too focused on it because they don't, it's not their interest. Like, mm -hmm. they're not. I mean, it makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what you're here for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So That's why we yeah, exist. You yeah. know, but that's also how they get jerked. But <laughs> Yeah, which I have had happen to artists and I have had happen to yeah. me, actually. I When I first started, mm. um, I had had a platform like I, they charged me nothing. It was like 75 bucks because I was what they were charging me was insane, like $500. Yeah. And I was like, well, I would like to see you do your stuff first before I invest that much money off rip. So we me and my artist gave them 75. They disappeared. I never heard from them again. Oh, my God. Like never heard from them again. And they're still posting like like screenshots of like testimonies from from people who've purchase from them and say that like they're doing great and but I've never heard back yeah. from them that $75 went to garbage I ended up just paying that money for something from my artist because I felt so bad I was like you know I vetted this person I went through everything I went through references they were supposed to be a reliable source and they weren't and I'm very big on like me and my artists are in this together you know, like I'm investing in this as well. So I, it was my idea to invest in this specific platform. It didn't work out. So out of my pocket, like I just put the money towards an event for my artist to perform. So he didn't have to pay because I was just like, you know, that was on on my fault that I yeah. like messed up with that. That's nice of you. Yeah. You don't need to do that. You don't. But like it happens, you know, and like it's a matter of like I have a lot of respect for my artists and I, I want to make sure that. Like, I've even invested in having certain photographers and stuff, like, having extra stuff that I knew would just benefit. And I've put stuff out of pocket, too. Just knowing that it's, like, this is what's going to really invest and progress my company, but my artists as well. And those professional photos are important. Yes. They're important. Oh, my God. They are They're so important. important. I paid... A lot of money out of pocket to make sure that some of my events had very professional content. Yeah. Even just having a photographer with you when you go out is important. Yeah. Even if it's not an event, like you're just going to the club or something. It's so beneficial to have a professional photographer because your, your phone picture is not going to look as good as an edited 
quality picture of you in the club with money flying everywhere. Like, you know, like you need to pick where you're going to invest. You know, that was my biggest thing with, with my corporate dudes. He's like, yo, bro, you got to get some valid photos. You got to mm -hmm. do a photo shoot. And I'm like, damn, B, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's at the beginning. We're like, oh, God. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but he was like, yo, you're investing in yourself. And that's what it is. You're investing in yourself. You're showing people that you're quality, not yeah. quantity. That's where I'm, I need to get into for myself now, like mm -hmm. having more pictures and more quality pictures of myself. And yeah. And really having just a lot more of me. Because usually I'm behind the scenes. But I'm starting to learn that like in the music world at least, I need to be in front of the scenes. You to do. really like... People need to see progress. you. They need to see me. They want to. Yeah. They need to live through me in a way. Exactly. As weird as not that all sounds. the time. Not yeah. all the time. But they need to see that. What they need to visually see what yeah. what you speak of. Exactly. Yeah. And it's it's me too. Like making sure that because I go out to a lot of spots and like I'll get no pictures. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just be having a good time yeah. and talking to people and networking, and then I'll get home and I'm like, wow, like. I didn't take one picture of myself. You need somebody like me around. Yeah. You know what I mean? I make sure I take pictures everywhere I go. I got video. I got I, B-roll. I take pictures of other people. Yeah. And I'll take okay. videos of other people. But never people, of you. But never of myself. Okay, That's my problem. Like, I'm gotcha. always recording. I have a lot of content. Mm -hmm. But it's never of me. And I'm like, okay. I need to really start getting more pictures yeah. and videos of myself. No, no, and you will. Yeah. And you will. Eventually, you know I mean? we'll get yeah. there. You'll get there. You know, you got so many things running through your mind. It's kind of, oh, damn, I forgot to take this picture. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like low on the totem pole. Yeah, like yesterday I was in a studio and it's one world, like W-O-N and then world. Yeah. And they have this studio that's so, I love space and like that futuristic vibe. And when mm -hmm. you walked in, it's like a little tunnel. And the whole thing just had lights, like LED lights. They were constantly changing colors. Nice. And it's like all white. And you walk through and then it was like red leather. And, and it looked like a spaceship. Like it looked like you had walked into a futuristic That's spaceship. Dope. The like, it was all like couches and stuff for people to sit. And the whole like ceiling was just covered in like different designs and stuff. It was just a really cool vibe. And then the studio, the actual booth was like in the corner. So like you don't even see the booth really because it goes into like almost a whole other room. It just looks like you're just vibing out with a huge TV for the producer to like do his magic. And nice. it was just so nice. And I was sitting there staring at the, the little walkway and I was like, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to do it. I Like, you know, I was like mentally preparing myself, yeah. waiting for everyone to finish taking their pictures. pictures yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then I got to like, my friend was like, oh, we got to go meet this artist, blah, blah, blah. And I forgot. Oh. <laughs> and I went home. Wow. And then when I got home, I was like, wow, I really should have. That was such a cute spot. But I know I'll be back. I mean, so you'll like, be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're in the, you know, you're in the industry. Though. Yeah, I, mean, I you, think you, I'm always yeah. going to be in a studio. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're going to live 24-7 there. You Literally. Know what I, mean? <laughs> I love it, though. It's so it. fun. Right now, we're talking to the very knowledgeable... <laughs> uh, the uh, founder of the Stella Connect, yeah. Jason Lee, here blessing us with the information that artists need to be artists. Now we're gonna go into the marketing and branding. Uh, oh man, my my least favorite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I'm not, I, like, I like to do it, but, you know, it's time consuming. It is extremely time consuming. It's time consuming. It's tedious. Yeah. And it's important. <laughs> yeah. It is extremely time consuming. It's also very interesting when you meet with people um, and they try to break down their vision of what their brand is because people typically already in their head, head have like a they have a whole like vision of who they want to become and what they, they have the end goal. But like, it's always all over the place. I feel when I meet people, like mm. it's always like I have 101 ideas. I just don't know where to start. Mm. So I think that's what I like the most about it is like I can, and I'm very big on like the craziest idea you could have. Tell me because I'm probably going to say yes. You know, like the most outrage, the thing you think that's the most not realistic is typically what is going to get you to where you need to go. So like, I feel like when you have, I always tell people like when I'm working with them, go through like, what is the craziest thing that you can envision for yourself? What's that end goal? And then work backwards. And like, what are you doing everything now to get to where you actually want to get to? Mm. And if you're not, then you need to sit and re- evaluate and that's where your marketing and branding comes in if your goal is to become a specific type of artist is to be 
you know, because every artist is different. Not everyone wants to be signed. Not everyone wants to be mainstream. Like there's different avenues for different artists. But if you know that your goal is to be X, Y, and Z, but you're moving in the direction to be something else, then you kind of have to sit and reevaluate. And I've had some artists who have told me like, all right, I'm not dropping no more music. I'm not doing anything because I need to revamp my entire look. Like revamp, like tatted, piercings, go buy different clothes. And then once they kind of went and got that look situated, they came back and they just focused on being in the studio. Mm, and, okay. and just dropping little gems here and there. Like, here's a picture of me out here. Not performing, not nothing. Just networking and building that image and that look for themselves. And then once they've established that look and people kind of know who they are and have built a relationship, boom, then they drop the song. It's like the whole pink wave, you know, pink came out hip hoppy and then all yeah. of a sudden you became punk rockish. You yeah. know what I mean? Or like I, Machine Gun Kelly. Like oh, I yeah, love yeah. Machine Gun Kelly. Really? I can't stand them, but what? okay, it's each his own. I think he's boring. What? Yeah, I'm not a fan. I would have like I like his n- initials. That's about okay. all. Okay. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, poor MGK. We that's got all right. You. No, but but you. but then you go like that. You know, not everybody's gonna someone, rock yeah. with you. And you, you know, know what, what I'm saying? I can say like, I don't listen to all his songs. I yeah. I was not a fan when he was a rapper. Um, yeah, me neither. I didn't even that's know what it is. Him. He went after Eminem, and it's like, yo, yeah, come on, like, bro. Like, you I go didn't Shaman? know. I just recently actually saw some of his videos that were like, whoa, like, that, yeah, that's I'm you. Like, that's what you're saying. Exactly. I'm like, um, yo. but he was young, and he he didn't know. And I also know artists who have said some crazy things, but just weren't being recorded or it didn't get posted. And I've spoken to some artists and I've been like, I know you're not at such a high level where you think it matters, but one day you might be. And getting canceled is very easy to do in this culture. Mm, So like now when you're in that starting stage, you have to be cautious of things, especially when you do have influence. Like I have like yesterday, I was with um, one of my friends who's an artist. And when she walked in, there were people who were like, oh, my God, it's her. It's her. Like, say something. Say something. Like, you could tell they were getting so anxious. And, like, they were like, oh, my God, like, it's actually her. She's the one from Instagram. Like, I know. You know, like, they were so excited. And I just looked at her and laughed. And I was like, you're famous. Like, that's dope. You know? But, like, to her, it, it, she was just kind of, like, she was so shocked. She was just like, oh, cool. Like, that's that's cool. And in my mind, I was like, you know, we don't realize sometimes the reach that we have or how many people are actually being influenced by us. So one wrong thing, you know, one wrong move and your whole career can go it's in quiet. the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it's you quiet. can lose all your fans, you fact. know, you can lose everyone just by saying something that to you was a joke or just by saying something that like you were drunk and you didn't even realize, you mm, know? Yeah. You got to be careful. The booze, the drugs, you got to be oh, able to yeah. hold all that Especially stuff down. Especially in this industry. I mean? Yeah. Because you could go on a rant that you'll regret for the rest of your life. Yeah. Or you can lash out. I know some mm-hmm. people who, I knew an artist who, he's a great guy, but he, his anger was crazy. And like, at, he would freak out on people. He would get into arguments with people in the studio. Like, and it, it's just kind of like you're creating a reputation for yourself that's really hard and mm-hmm. stuff. No, nope, and people ain't dealing with it. No, oh, not man. when there's people who are willing to to not do that. Yeah, yeah. and our talent. Like there's <laughs> yeah, everyone's an artist now, so really, like, not to say that you know not everyone can succeed or or whatnot, but every it's such an oversaturated market. There's everyone can be an artist now. Mm-hmm. Like you can pick up a mic and you can have a ghostwriter. You can write. You can. Yes, the other day on the train, I saw someone performing, and he was horrible. Like, he was screaming into the mic. And it wasn't, like, punk rock screaming. He was screaming, like, an R&B song. Like, was it on the J train? No, it was, like, it was in Manhattan on, like, 42nd Street oh, where okay. they have all the trains. Oh, the, okay, cool. Yeah, like, and Times he was Square. just, like, <laughs> like, wow. like jumping around. And, the, and he was having the time of his life, so I couldn't knock him. But he was so not talented. Like, he should not be a singer. Like, I was really just standing there, like, wow. Like, wow. We've reached that level. Yeah. And we we... But I was watching. Yeah. I stopped and I watched. Oh, wow. You know? And, like, I remember it. And I'm bringing it up again. Why? It was just so... It was the fact that he was so confident to not care. And I think that's a big thing. So, like, that's where I... Which is a very important uh, attribute to have as an artist. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why I feel like it's cool when you're a well-rounded artist. When Mm -hmm. you have your marketing, your branding, your artist development. Because since it's such an oversaturated market, there's going to be people who lack in certain areas. You can have a great voice, but you can suck at marketing. Mm-hmm. 
and not have a team behind you. I agree. You can have a dope team, but you can just be difficult to work with. There's there's people who who fumble in certain wow. factors and certain areas. I'm going to start picking up the diamonds and the rubies <laughs> off the table. You know, the gems are real. No, it's real in the yeah. field. But it's true. So that's why when if you can become a well-rounded artist and have all those characteristics, that's what's going to set you apart from all these people. Facts. You know. Folks, everyone, uh, the podcast is sponsored by OTW Threads, Out of This World Threads, Be Out of This World, and AttitudeOn10.com. Yes. Your place to start getting over your trauma and build resilience. Now, the next situation is content creation. My favorite part. Yeah, you I know? actually love content creation, too. <laughs> so yes. much fun. It is. It's time consuming. It's exhausting. But I love content creation. Um, yeah, I do co-produce uh, a show called The Creator's Journey. The I Creator's do content Journey. for them. Yes. We were talking about that earlier. Yes. Discuss it. Go ahead. It's, <laughs> this is your forum. Go yes. ahead. So The Creator's Journey is actually a show that was put together by Ayers Harris with Ayers Entertainment. And it's essentially a, a little YouTube series where artists come in, they get interviewed, they go through different games, different questions. Um, then we do a live studio performance. And that's pretty much it. When you come in, I do give free consultations for any artists that do come into the interview. Well, that's um, nice of you. Yes, I do. Um, so you kind of get to come in. It's a really cool studio. It's at Lab Studios at, um, in Ridgewood. And when you come... We, is that like your home base? That is my home base. Okay. Yeah. So everything I do is out of Lab Studios. Um, I am in Fight Club sometimes, but most of the time I'm in Lab Studios. I have a good relationship with the owner. Um, we have a lot of partnerships. Even one of my um, businesses that I just started, Stay High, we have some of our products at Lab Studios. So like when you come in as an artist or just as someone who's coming to the studio, you can purchase stuff from my company. You get to meet me. You get to get a consultation. You get direct access to all the services that I offer. You also get to meet Aphrodite, who's one of the co-hosts, who she curates events. So you automatically get plugged into someone who does artist development and services. You get plugged into someone who's always curating events. So if you're looking for an opportunity to perform or pop out, like you have that direct plug. You also have Ayers, who is the plug for everything. He's connected. He does everything. So like you're automatically getting all of these things for free. Quality, too. Yeah. And we have an amazing videographer and photographer, JD, for JD Visuals. Um, he works with Ayers in terms of recording and editing. So the quality of stuff that you get is so high and it's so good that it's like, it, it, it can't go wrong. Like, it's it doesn't get better. Yeah. It's exciting stuff, man. I mean, if, you know, if you're an artist, you want to, you know, you, you're you up and coming and you don't, and you need a guy, you need guidance, mm -hmm. you know, because you may have talent, you have no guidance, you don't know where to go. You know, you just know that you can sing or you know that you can draw, or you know that you can spit poetry fire. Yeah. You know, you, you're providing that. All right. And you create the content for Yeah. Them. So for them, I do yeah. a lot of behind the scenes when we are there. Um, so a lot of times, the videos and pictures that I've taken, I do a lot of fun like filters off of Instagram. I keep it super simple, but I've noticed that like the artist ends up using that for their own things. Um, so I'll typically do a lot of behind the scenes and send it directly to the artist. Okay. So as soon as you leave, you get all that content to work with on your own social media. And then I do flyers. I do cover arts. I do um, Instagram posts, story posts. I edit. I haven't gotten too much into editing right now, mm -hmm. but I do um, edit videos. And what are you using? Stuff. InShot? Uh, what Premiere. You, Premiere. Adobe okay. Premiere. Okay, cool. All right. So you're messing with the big boys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I went to school for film. All so right, like cool. we had All to right. know how so to. So did I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I do know how to work cameras. Okay. Um, I know how to record, edit, and all of that. Cool. Um I'm not getting too into the editing and recording. That's not really my passion. Well, you could be there forever. Yeah, Trust it's me, not I know. my passion. <laughs> I get really, I think it's tedious. I'd rather sit with Extremely. the editor and tell them, like, do this, do that. Yeah. Um, I'm more into directing and record and um, producing. Okay, cool. I mean, no, makes sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to the next thing. Music, video, and photo shoots. Oh, you be hooking that up? Yes. Yeah, so I actually do the music videos and photo shoots with my team, um, I have, we have like a system set up with JD Visuals and Ayers Entertainment. And what we do essentially is you would come in through me or any one of them, whoever you get in contact first. We okay. set up a consultation to go over your treatments, um, basically your shooting dates. We do offer packages where you can get like five music videos and five photo shoots for a really great, like amazing price. Um, I also do location scouting. So I have a whole database of a bunch of different locations to fit a bunch of different vibes. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay for. 
Um, so we set, we situate all of that and then we pick the dates and then our team goes in themselves and records and edits the video for you and I'll produce and direct it. You sound very organized. I, I love it. Thank you. I try I to I love be. organization. <laughs> you have to be. If like, not, you'll I'm going to be honest like, yo, like you got to be organized, man. That's the, like, to me, that's like number one. You got to be organized. Yeah. And if you're going to deal with people such as yourself, you want to make sure that these people are organized. And that's great to, to hear, yeah. you know, because we're having this conversation for the first time. I'm like blown yeah. away. I'm going to be honest. You. Like, I'm like, duh, I may need to hire you for, <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely going to get the EPK. So everybody, just, you know, she's going to be making my EPK because yeah. I'm going to the Black Effect Podcast Festival. And I'm coming for y'all with some ill stuff, and she's gonna help me produce it. Yeah, I'm so and, excited and, and for you want to talk about the little deal that you have for the people right now? Or no, um, I'm not gonna shoot out prices, but you do okay. get um, five music videos and five photo shoots. You get the you get the director and producer, which would be myself. You do get two cameramen that come with you. We are in the process of setting up a dance team. Mm. Um, where we will have professional dancers. Nice, um, always nice in the background. Yes, always. always. Um, I'm actually joining that dance team myself because I used to dance. So I'm going to be one of the dancers on oh the team. Oh my God, you're like a renaissance woman. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, that's actually really funny that you said renaissance because I do have something with that name coming out soon. So really? interesting. Yeah. What do you have coming out? Tell I us. I can't say right now. Why not? I can't. I can't. Give us a little hint. But um, there is some rebranding coming okay. soon. Oh, okay, cool. And renaissance is kind of like in the... In the loop. In the loop. So, yeah. So, All that's right. interesting that you said that. Nice. But, um, yeah. So, you you do get everything um, embodied within working with us to get your music video and photo shoots. Sometimes people want to set up photo shoots and don't know how to go about it for their songs or don't have the locations. I'm, like, obsessed with finding locations. I don't know. Because, I mean, that, yeah. that stands out. And in New York, there's a plethora there's so of many, awesome so locations. So many, yeah. You know, and people keep going to the same spots. I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, bro, there's spots out here. And you I'm can always, shoot. In, like, I love experiencing, like, life. So I'm always somewhere. And people are always telling me, like, where did you find this? Where did you go? So I've kind of just been, like, scouting out different places, going to them, testing them out myself, also just finding them online and making this list. So whenever people need photo shoots or music videos, like, you don't have to use the same spots that everyone else is recording their music video. At. I've seen like three music videos with the same spot. And then I found them on like Peer Space. And I'm like, oh, I know about this place. Like I can see the prices and everything. So like for me, it's more of like what's more authentic. And I'm from New York. So I feel like since I'm from New York and I'm working in New York, like there are some places that I know about that other people might not. Facts. So it's like it works out. It's a cool deal. You definitely get a bit of everything. Our music videos, all our videos from like the creator's journey, our live studio performances are all done by Ayers and JD. So like Fine. everything's done in-house within our team. I love it. I love it. The studio sessions. Yes. You know <laughs> what I mean? What's up with that? You got the studio on deck I as do, well? I do. Lit. So for any artist that works with me, um, I have a few studios that I can connect them to. Um, Lab Studios is the home base though. So like when you do book a session through me, I do book it for you within the lab. Um, and then I also come with the studio session too. I know that sounds a little weird, but if um, you book the session and you want professional pictures taken while you're in there, professional videos taken, my team does come um, and we'll do that. I also offer consultations and producing as well as my like partners that work with me. They do producing as well. So if you want me to work with you on your actual project or your song, like I'll come to the studio session with you and I'll stay the whole time and I'll help you with your song. I'll help you come up with the marketing ideas for what you're doing and like really listen to what you're working with. And I've been dabbling with music a little bit more. So like I'm learning a lot about producing an actual track and putting it together. So that's kind of what we do. We do have other studios too um, for people who maybe can't make it to the lab studios just off of like location base. So we have Fight Club that I work with. Um, so we can help you book studios with Fight Club. Also, like if you're trying to do podcasts and stuff, we do have connections to other studios um, like One World that just opened up. So if you need access to any studio, literally throughout any borough in New York, we'll put you in there. I love it. Yes. And they're all at different price ranges. So it works with everyone's budget. It starts off from like as low as like $65 an hour for a session to as high as like $200, depending on like what you're getting and what studio you want to get into. Word? The Stella Connect has the all your connect. bases covered, man. Wow. Yes. We got one more thing to discuss. The EPK. Tell, yes. tell artists why that's important. 
Um, well, EPK and what it is because I don't know. I don't even know if some of these cats know what that is. <laughs> uh, usually not. Most people it, don't yes, know what electronic they are. press kit is yes. what it stands for. Yes, it's an electronic press kit. It's essentially your resume. So as an artist, when you're applying for labels or for um, media, anything in, from festivals to performances, you need to have something that people can see all the work that you've done. So people think like your Instagram is enough, but sometimes there's things that don't make it to your Instagram. Some people don't like truthfully don't want to sit and go through your Instagram. Some people don't care enough. They're busy. Like we have a hundred and things going on. Um, so your EPK essentially is like I do them around three pages, two to three pages, depending on how much information the artist has. Um, but it has everything from your stats, places you've performed, um, different. If you've had some big collaborations and features with people, if you've performed in some pretty cool places like SOB or with major stage, like there's a lot of different things that you would incorporate into your EPK. It's also all clickable. So when the person gets your EPK, they can click on the different pictures, on different links, and it will take them to everything that they need. Your music link, it takes them to your Instagram, your, um, if you have a Twitter, Facebook, anything that you're working with, it's all on the EPK. So it's all in one place, essentially. It's just so much easier for people to like get to know who you are, how you started, why you started. I always have artists tell me like who influenced them to get started because then like if you get someone who's like a huge Drake fan and Drake was one of your main influences, you already have that connection in with them, you know? Now they're looking at you as like, oh, okay, like this is the type of music they make. This is who they are. And like it just it works out. I love that. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, it's who you are. You're basically mm -hmm. giving... Now, and what do you put the platform on? Like, is it on, in a thumb drive? Like, you know what I'm saying? How would you tell an artist to use it, if um, you will? So, essentially, how the artist uses it is on their own. Um, if it's someone I'm working a little bit more hands-on, typically email usually works good. Okay. I make it in three different forms for you. So, you get a PDF version that's all clickable. You also get like the actual image of it because some people like to post it on their Instagram or just send it through like via Instagram and stuff like that. Um, and then you also get like one free update. So like I kind of give you access to kind of tell me like what needs to be updated, what needs to be changed. If maybe like a couple of weeks move past or like a month moves past and you like had some crazy like maybe you did a collaboration with Cardi and like that should be something that's on there. Like I'll go in and I'll update it for you and stuff like that. Nice. But um, typically it and then really you charge, do you charge for revisions. I didn't mean to cut you uh, off. No, I don't. Not for the first revision. Not, okay, after, after the that, first yeah. revision. Okay, cool. That's what just because like it, it's just a couple changes. If it's a whole like you need a whole new EPK, yeah, then that's yeah. different. Um, mm -hmm. But essentially like I just email it out to them. That usually works fine. Every artist is different depending on like if you're with higher quality um, people where you're like higher platforms, then like a thumb drive will make sense because now you're you're with a bunch of different people who are mm -hmm. running around. Yeah. Um, but if you're just sending people things off of Instagram, then like, you don't, you know, you just send them the image and that usually works. Awesome. Awesome. And you definitely think there's something an artist should always have with always, them, right? Yeah. Always. Yeah. I think you should essential. always have an EPK, especially if you're networking because like I've had artists who I've gotten their Instagram and they have like four pictures up. But then they've done like really cool performances. So it's kind of like now I can't really gauge anything about your artistry off your Instagram. So like just having that helps. It helps me too. like if you're sending me and you want specific services and then you send me your EPK, I'll know that you're more serious. Mm. And then labels too. If a label is calling you into a meeting, it's mandatory for you to have an EPK. So if you're anyone who wants to be getting a distribution deal or because there's information label, I didn't even know yeah. you're dropping jewels I'm telling you we're mining over here yeah man. you can't go to yeah. a label without an EPK or I mean you can they'll probably try to sell it for you but like I've seen people charge $160 for EPKs I charge $80 you know and you get the whole thing you get a whole package you get a media kit you get it all clickable links and like I tailor it around your look so the pictures and images that you send me I sit and look at the artist's Instagram and really tailor the entire EPK to match their aesthetic and match their vibe so that it actually connects to who they are. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You're doing good work. Thank you. Thank You're helping you. these artists out, man. I hope y'all are listening, man. It's no Trying. joke. Listen, listen. <laughs> now, I want to go into this, right? I want to talk about the sexism in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this world. You know what I oh, mean? And yes. how have you been able to handle it? Because I'm sure it cannot be easy. Sorry, but yeah. Um, it's interesting because I feel like we're in a stage in society where 
you have like the Me Too movement, you have a lot of things that's going on. So there's a lot of pressure on everyone to kind of be politically correct and move correct. And I'm a very laid back person, but I do notice that there are certain things like I have noticed that sometimes like speaking with certain professionals, um, like they'll address the person I work with more. You know, like when they're talking to both of us, like they'll look at him and they'll talk to him. And like, I'll say the same thing or I'll say something. And then it's kind of like when he said, it, you know, like the attention gets focused more. And I try not to pay too much attention to it. But as God, a that woman, must be terrible. That really happens. You, yeah. Like you, you catch it. And, I, and people don't. I've noticed like some people don't do it on purpose. Yeah. It's just kind of like engraved to them that like the man is kind of the boss. And like, especially when you work with people where culturally, like it, like machismo is a real thing, you know? So like that idea that like the man, like the woman is a little bit below the man. Misogyny is a real thing. thing. (laughs) I was looking for the word. I was trying to think of it. I was like, I just kept thinking in Spanish. I'm like, let's not sugarcoat it. uh, Um, Yeah, but it's real and it happens. And like people don't want to talk about it because they say like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not, you know, whatever. Or like girls get kind of like, oh, well, she was showing a lot of skin. So like, why not? You know, like guys kind of move that. So like, I'm trying to be cautious on like how I carry myself. But then again, like just as a woman who honestly, I don't really care what a lot of people think. I'm going to go with what's most comfortable for me. So it's finding that balance of like, how can I, embrace my sexuality and be sexy and be confident but still be taken seriously in the industry because I'm not an artist and I've dressed up to certain events and people have stopped me and they're like oh are you performing are you the artist and it's like no like I'm I'm not I'm the manager I'm the artist developer I have services or whatever it is for that event um so it's really finding that balance because I've seen girls go through a lot of things no, it's real in yeah. the field. It's in in the field. this industry, it's male dominated. Mm-hmm. All I'm around men twenty four seven. Like I'm the other day, I went out to um, an event and I was the only girl. And on top of that, I was the only one who spent money. So I was just looking around and I was like, "Yeah, I need to find new people to be around." Because I was just like, "There's no way that you guys are in the industry. We come to a professional event and not one of you were supporting the event." You know what I mean? Like, that's Terrible. a big thing, too. Like, if you're an artist or anyone in the industry and you're going to go out and you don't have money, don't go out. <laughs> like, stay home. Let them know. Like, Thank that's so you. corny to me. Like, for you to be a grown adult and for you to go out to a club and then you can't buy a $5 shot because you're trying to save money. Like, why are you in the club then? Save money and stay home. Work yeah, like, write a song. You know? <laughs> stay home. Do something at home. Watch a movie. Connect yeah. with yourself. Do some Word. face mask and self-care. Like, like there's yeah. so some, many some, things. Some, some crystal healing, you know, whatever. Oh, I have my crystals in my bag. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Well, you know, one of our sponsors is a crystal healer. It's a crystal really? healing I brand. I love that. Yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah I love she, that. Uh, she's been on the podcast, so you can check her out. I think it's episode 75, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, yes. Yeah, and then we go into it. It's like an I hour and a half I'm of definitely crystal healing. Gonna, so I'm all about that, that. I have my business, Say Hi, um, that is just starting. It's a smoke accessories, like a one-stop shop for stoners. But the goal is to kind of take the narrative off of smoking being this bad thing, smoking being something that people just want to get high and do nothing, or like the, take the stereotypes away from smoking and show that you know, psychedelics and and smoking can really actually help you. There's a documentary on Netflix. Yes, I don't know if you checked is. it out. It's pretty yes. wild. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That was awesome. <laughs> I love I I love that concept. If you notice, like the Stellar Connect is themed around that very surreal aesthetic of like space and psychedelics and stuff. Just because I feel like as a society, we're scared to dive into our minds. Yeah, and we're scared to be alone with ourselves. We're scared to really like tackle on certain things but if you do like you live a whole different life you live a whole different in a whole different world when you're more spiritually like in tune with yourself and it doesn't have to be like that you're spiritual and you always have crystals it's just a matter of developing a better relationship with you and that's kind of what my business is like about like my stay high business like it's supposed to be like stay high like stay high but stay high like high on life and keep elevating yourself and yeah, keep your, your vibrations up man you know yeah. gotta be keep your, your vibrations up yeah. facts you know I mean but you tell people that some people just are authentically miserable though yeah they yeah, do, so do you so want much. them to be there? <laughs> I can sit and break down a lot of people and their minds I love doing it with people like I'll break yeah. down their minds but there are some people who like 
you can't convince people of anything. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I've learned. Like people will be who they are. People will will always like just follow through with whatever they've set in their minds. But then there are some people who are willing to learn and they're yeah. willing to like open themselves up. And I was like that. Like I used to think I knew it all and I was the best and I, I was doing everything right. And so I lost everything and I was like, oh, I'm in rock bottom. Like, how do I get to the top? Humbling experiences will do that for you. Yes, they will. <laughs> yes. Yes, they will. I want to talk about one more thing, uh, Stella, before we move on to our next segment. Yes. It's cross-marketing, okay. right? How important do you think that is? And what I mean by that is, like, for example, you're on the show right now. You know, I usually send guest clips and, you know, we'll, you know, uh, you posting your clip on my, me posting you on my in- Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you think that works? Or you think- it's so valuable. Really? I think that is so valuable. I don't feel like people do that enough, No, man. they don't. Because, um, so I, I think it's a matter of figuring out your worth as a creator and then where you want to go. Um, I've had some artists turn down certain platforms and opportunities because it wasn't, it didn't have a specific amount of following. It didn't have a specific amount of engagement. And it's kind of like, okay, but their audience can reach you know, like you're going to reach their audience and you're going to reach my audience. So like it, I think that that's kind of like networking 2.0. You know, when you are meeting new people, you're creating new opportunities for yourself. You're branching off. I was just talking to someone today like you don't have to stay in one lane because you're in this lane. You know what I mean? Like you should be branching off and, and cross marketing, even in stuff that's outside of what you typically do, like as a music artists, you should be connecting with business owners, club owners. You should be connecting with all podcasts and all platforms because you're not going to blow up if you're not everywhere. You need to be everywhere. You need to, like Cardi B blew up because she was on everything. Everyone knew of her from something. Yep. Like whether it was a show, whether it was Instagram, whether it was a platform she was interviewing with, like it was just a matter of putting your face out there and being known. Like there are some artists that I know, but don't know personally, but I know because I've seen them on every platform I follow. And like, that's really where you're going to blow up. So cross marketing is so important. Like I, it, it really irks me sometimes when people like don't want to do certain things. But then again, I get it. Like if you're already at, a, which is where your like worth comes in and your mm-hmm. value as an artist. It's like, if you know this is your market and you know where you stand, like then, okay, like I can see, like I know some artists that refuse to pay to perform or to be on certain platforms because it's like, what are you really doing for me? But if it's valuable, if you can see the the value in it, I say go for it. Love it. Thank you for the knowledge. And we've reached a point now. Jason Lee, Stella Connect, Dropping the Jewels, <laughs> podcast sponsored by OTW Threads, Attitude on 10. It is time to play Five Words with Angel. All right. Like I told you before, on Five Words with Angel, I'm going to give you a word. Okay. A phrase or a question. And you're going to give me the first word or thought. Because sometimes it becomes a thought okay. that comes to your head. You ready? Okay. Let's do Clearing it. Clearing my mind. All right. The first one is, I'm sure you've heard this song. Titi me preguntó. I've been asking every guest this for the last five weeks. What's the last thing you're on asked you? When are we going out? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) My aunts are very close to my age. So we go out a lot. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Good that you get to hang out with family too. So my mom too. I my mom me and my mom go out like All the time. My mom's my best friend, yeah. Well, that's great, you know, because with all the people that you meet, it's like sometimes you want to taste the home. Mm -hmm. So that's fire. All right, when are we going up? All right, the next one, uh, you have this thing, Artist of the Month. Could you break any Artist of the Month for August? And that's You can't do that here. Um, Well, Artist of the Month, what do you think about when you think about Artist of the Month, actually? That's the question. Talent. Talent. Love it. It's the first thing. The first (laughs) thing. Love it. (laughs) Uh, We haven't actually picked Artist of the Month for August. We've been a little swamped. We actually ended up getting more submissions than we had anticipated. Okay, so you're still working on that situation. Um, Yeah, and we're trying to do it in a way where we don't pick the artist because we work with them so hands-on that it can come off as favoritism. Yeah. So essentially, like our entire team sits and listens to all the submissions and then we'll all 
agree on who like the top three will be. And then we put that on Instagram and the um the like following would vote for them. All right, cool. That makes sense. I love it. The next word is musicians. What do you think about when we think about musicians? Drums. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love the drums myself. I saw someone yesterday who was in a studio and when he came out, he was throwing out his drumsticks. They were destroyed. Like destroy. I've never seen drumsticks so destroyed. They're, you know, they're not that easy to break. To no, and you. they were going. You could them. hear them. It was like some hard, like rock, like music, and it. It just. I love rock music, and I love punk oh, rock. Yeah, like yeah. I'm into that whole. I can't live without it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I feel like there's not enough of that in mainstream music right now, man. I wish there was yes more. Yes and no. I think it's starting to become that like emo uh, mosh pit vibe is really starting to become more popular. I feel. I hope so. We yeah. need it. It's, it's a just good... a weird lane because yeah. like you have artists like MGK who kind of are like making it mainstream more and like bringing more attention to yeah. it and like. He had that song with like Willow Smith, like emo girl that I think blew up really quickly. Is this music worth listening to now? Should I give it a shot? I mean, I don't like all his songs, but there are some songs that I personally like. Is there some punk stuff going on? I like that Yeah, it's like a pop rock type of vibe. Oh, that's all right. Um, I I used to listen to Creed back in the day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Like, it's it's definitely (laughs) like a cool vibe. Um, But I do think that's something that's becoming more mainstream. I think the issue is that from what I've seen, on the behind the scenes, it's like there's this battle between like good and evil. Love and it. like you kind of have this narrative being pushed by a lot of mainstream artists that's very satanic. And a lot of people are kind of trying to stray away from it. But the aesthetic is so fire that it's like. Yeah, it's not wrong. We have Marilyn Manson. It's like you, you, know feel, I mean? like, you feel scared yeah, to like Black love Sabbath, it. That's but a thing. Like, come on. It's, it's part thing. of Americana. It is. And it's weird because the further you get into the music industry, you learn a lot more of the agendas and the politics that goes on. So like you become a little bit more conscious and more aware of like what narratives you're going to push. But it's hard because, like, I find myself struggling because, like, I love Demi Lovato. Okay. Like, she's, like, one of my guilty pleasures. I yeah, have the no, biggest she's crush on her. Yeah. She's, I- I've always loved her growing up, but she's taken this new rock metal approach with her music, and I love it. Like, I love the sound, but, like, her music video, she's, like, on a upside-down cross, you know? Like, on a, like, it's really, like, tapping into a lot of different things and I'm such a spiritual person that I'm so aware of certain stuff so it's kind of like navigating like where is it that you're gonna go with that type of music and that sound like are you really about what you're singing and rapping about because this is very satanic or are you just fitting that agenda and narrative and like that aesthetic because it's cool Exactly. you know like it's figuring out like what it is because there's been times where I've been like not fully sober listening to some songs and I'm like (laughs) I'm like a portal is about to open the hell. Yo, I need to... nah, nah, I'm good. I don't do that. <laughs> you know, like you get portals. scared listening to certain music because yeah. it's like the music videos are are scary. But then again, like I, a part of me really loves that. Like loves how like creative people's minds can be, especially when you've experienced certain things in life. It's like you become so aware. Even going back to like like the song "Murder on My Mind," that music video is. It's insane. Pretty wild. Have you seen that? Like yeah, that music video wild. is insane. Yeah. Like, it, but I remember Pushing I watched the envelope it. Envelope for sure. I watched it like ten times, and I was just so because cinem- like cinematically, mm-hmm. it was done. Yeah. So creatively, like this is you it seeing into someone's ten- mind. Yeah, it teases your senses. You know, it yeah, hits your senses it's like, hard. It's like what is happening in his head <laughs> that this is what he decided to. Do. But you're so intrigued. So it's weird. Like I, I know some artists. I had one who um. He was cool. We, we don't work together, but he was cool. Um, he he told me like the lane and direction he was going in. And I was like, you need to be careful. Like, you know, this is this world of music is very dangerous yeah. for your soul and your mind because you're surrounded by so much that can put you in so much danger. And you're you allow yourself to spiral. And he was like, I already sold my soul. He was like, I already know my fate. All right. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, as, long as, as, long as, you're, <laughs> as long as you're committed he to it. He was like, yeah. I already know my fate and I'm OK with it because I know I was put on earth to make music. So I'm going to do it until I can. Nice. And I was like, well, you do it. Then. You go, boy. You <laughs> do your thing. Wow. The next thing, the next word is drill music. What Shorty Riesley. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> the artist I manage. Nice. Shorty Reasley? Yeah, Shorty Reasley. He's my first artist that I started managing. He's one of the um, main ones that I work with very hands-on. All right, cool, man. You know, if you if you ever want to bring him by, let me know. All right, bet. And then the fifth and final word is the most important thing right now. The Stella Connect. What do you think about what you think about the Stella Connect? Um, Growing. I love it. Growing. I think it's growing. I'm actually very um, blessed and excited and humbled at the fact that it's grown so much in such a short amount of time. Like, I, I didn't really think it would grow this much or be at the level that it's at. Because there's certain, like, brands that I've seen that's been around for a while. And, like, I... It, it's weird because, like, I, the other day, went to, like, the Charlemagne show. And I was online and I was with people and I was talking and I looked at the girl that was online with me. And in my head, I was like a couple months ago, I reached out to her to be on her platform and to work with her. And I, I didn't get a response. Like I, I was just like a random person on Instagram. Now I'm with her, you know, like now Love I'm that. with the people that I was like following on Instagram and actually like tuning into their stuff and watching and supporting. So like it was cool to go from being someone at home, like thinking like, wow, like this is the life I want to live. These are the things I want to do to now like I'm doing it. So it's like. Wow, it, it, manifestation works, and hard work really does. Well, pay I off. think hard work, work yeah, works. hard work, but manifestation <laughs> you know I mean? too. Yeah, you got to see it because if, because the thing is, when you get there, then you're gonna be uncomfortable yeah. if you don't see the vision. That's yeah, why, but that's no, why it's I so believe great, in manifestation because yeah. if you can't see it, then you can't. You can't do be it. there because yeah. when you get there, then you're gonna be like mad awkward, and you're not gonna feel like you belong. You're gonna get that imposter syndrome popping. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I hear you. Hard work is what it you've been doing, off. and that's yeah. what matters. You know what I'm saying. Now, what? Well, where can we find you on IG? Give us all the IGs yes. that you think are relevant and important to all the artists that have been listening and everyone that has been listening who wants to follow Stella. I mean, uh, St the Stella Connect and Jace Lee. Yes. So for the Stella Connect, it's at the underscore Stella Connect. And then for my personal, it's at zero officially underscore Jace. So it's like zero and then spell officially without the O. And then underscore J-A-Y-S, Jace. And all my um, accounts are on my main page. They all take you to where you need to go. So you can find everything on at zero officially Jace. Okay, zero officially Jace. Yeah, zero officially underscore Jace. Okay, yeah. now is that the most important one or is the Stella Connect the most important um, one? They both take you to the to each other. I mean, that's true. They do. So, they yeah. do. You <laughs> cross market yourself. Yes, that's in a the fact. bio, it takes you to everything. Right, My cool. Stella Connect has um, Airs Entertainment and Afroductions as well, Copy. as well as JD Visuals all on it. So you can get to everyone from the Stella Connect. Love it. Now, final message to the artists out there before you sign off. Um... Let me think. I want to make it different from what we were talking about. I think for all artists, just focus on investing in who you are as a person, not just financially, but emotionally as well. Focusing on your self-care, your mental health, and like really knowing what your goals are. Like that is so important. So I would say just really focus on becoming the best version of yourself and working hard on your craft and everything else is going to start to fall in line. So yeah. Thank you so much, <laughs> Jason Lee, the me. Stella yes. Connect in the building. Yes. Everyone that was uh, the person here, blessing us with the knowledge, Miss uh, Jason yes. Lee from the Stella Connect, founder of the Stella Connect. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe. Click on that notification bell. You know the drill. Follow us on Spotify as well. I'd rather you spot me there than the YouTube, to be honest. Spotify is popping. Spotify is lit, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to get there. Um, don't forget our sponsors. Thank you again. OTW Threads. Be out of this world. Attitude on 10. Uh, your place to start getting over your drama, uh, trauma and uh, build resilience. Uh, the blog is on uh, the blog and the exclusive merch. Don't forget get tag me and jason lee in a post and subscribe show us that you subscribe to the angel of words podcast with that happy face get a free mug coming your way uh and thank you everyone for tuning in yes thank you much love we'll talk to you later Artists should not be paying for followers, likes, none of that. It's very tacky. You can tell who has fake followers. Um, it actually looks more unprofessional when you have like 30K followers, but then 23 likes 
or only like 50 comments. It looks more authentic when you have whatever number of followers you organically got, but then the engagement matches. It's always your engagement that works more than your following. So like if you have 400 followers, but then you have 300 likes on your pictures, those are all your actual organic fans. Those are the people that are going to come out, spend money. Those are the people that are going to actually listen to your music. 30,000 fake followers doesn't give you 30,000 streams or 30,000 fans. It just makes you look cool on Instagram. But then you look tacky when people can scroll through your followers and you can tell they're all fake. So don't do it. No more fake followers or fake likes or fake comments. Stay away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.